Hi there, welcome back to Blackpool for this, the second semi-final in our Riley's Poker.com uh, World 8-Ball Pool Championships. The first semi-final we saw last time really was terrific. If this second semi-final even begins to live up to it, it really will be a great match. Let's just remind ourselves what happened last time. There you can see Gareth Potts taking it 10-7 against Lee Clough, but really the story is that Lee Clough at one stage was 6-1 ahead. Gareth Potts fought back sensationally. He's now through to the final. Who will he face, though? It's Mick Hill against Rob Mackay this time. Now, with me here, I'm delighted to say, is Keith Brewer. And uh, Keith, uh, you know what it's all about. These uh, level of games, they're very intense. You called the last one spot on. How do you see this one going? Well, you've got to go with the form guy, Mick Hill. He's probably one of the best players that's ever picked up a cue in the game of pool. He'll be uh, the bookies' favourite and most of the spectators' favourite as well. But the guy he's playing, Rob Mackay, who's a virtual unknown, but he's well known to myself, uh, <laughs> I can assure you he's uh, got a lot of pedigree. Has he beaten you? Is that why you say uh, that? Well, he's given me a fair few games <laughs> in my time, but he's beaten two excellent players on the way here, yeah. David. He's beaten Jason Twist and Phil Harrison in deciding frame matches. Well, let's just confirm that by taking a look at the road to the semi-finals for both players, starting first with Mick Hill. Uh, there's confirmation he's beaten Shane O'Hara. Uh, you could also say that he put out Ron McCarthy, but also Carl Morris in a fairly controversial quarter-final. And as far as Rob Mackay is concerned, there, Wayne Smith, and then Jason Twist, the former world champion, 8-7. Phil Harrison, the very experienced player, just shaded him 9-8. It really does suggest that we're in for a very tight match. And I think uh, before we go to the players, we ought to just ask you for your verdict on how it's going to work out. Well, if it's anything like the first uh, semi-final, David, we're in for a real treat, aren't we? You know, it's, this is one of them where your heart kind of tells you Mick's going to run away with this one. But I think your head says, well, maybe Rob will put up a real fight here because he's put in two very good performances so far. He wasn't, yeah. he wasn't phased out here on the TV against Phil. And, and of course, he's a very seasoned player. So, so you're not let's sitting on the fence then here. No, no, no. I think, I, think Mick will, I think Mick will win it. But I'm just hoping Rob puts up a good fight and then maybe takes him all the way. I think the message is sit back and enjoy it, eh? Absolutely. OK, fine. That's just what we're going to do. We want you to do the same. Meantime, here's Scott and Dave. Yes, it is time for your second semi-final here at the Imperial Hotel in Blackpool. So, ladies and gents, without further ado, let's play, play ball. ball. Your first player, ladies and gents, proved in his quarter-final that he can battle with the best. And he's going to have to do this afternoon, Scott, because his opponent today is known as the Potty Machine. Ladies and gents, will you please welcome out both of your players for this afternoon's semi-final. Mick Hill and Rob Mackay! <laughs> Well, the two combatants enter the forum. Who will oppose Gareth Potts in the final? Is it Between Mick Hill and Rob Mackay. Mick Hill on the left, the number three seed in this year's event. And it has to be said, heavily fancied. And the lag can be very important, this lag, especially if you ever get to the business end of a, of a match where the break is a defining factor. And it's Rob Mackay. Easily winning the lag, so he will initiate the breaking sequence. And as was the case in our first semifinal, I'm happy to be joined by the Fox, Lee Kendall, and our man on the spot, our referee, Sean Baker. And gentlemen, the man in your picture has a very tall order in the First frame, Rob McKay to break. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big ask uh, for Rob to win this match, but he's uh, put in... Uh, a good performance by knocking out a two-time world champion and Phil Harrison in the last round. Frame number one, Rob Mackay from the West Indies flies the cue ball onto the floor and that is not the way you want to start a major semi-final in the world championships no less. Open table. No, maybe just a little bit of adrenaline there. Spoke to Rob just before the match and he seemed completely at ease. He said he was totally confident, he was quite happy he was going out there. He didn't really care, it was Mick Hill. But, uh, he's given Mick Hill two visits here, the cue ball being off the table. It's two visits rather than the one if the cue ball had gone down the pocket. So, great opportunity, opportunity for Mick Hill straight away in this match, Lee. Yeah, and I noticed when uh, Mick Hill lagged off, he, he seemed to be very nervous. He, and he, he, Mick always shakes. You can see him racking the pool balls up, and you can't understand how he gets them in a triangle, normally a circle, if anybody else was shaking like that. 
but that's just how he is. But you know, he obviously is a little bit edgy. He knows he's a big favourite to get through to the final. Yes, and that can work against you, Lee. Yeah, but this is a perfect start for him. You've got two visits, and all the yellows are uh, sat nicely, middle of the table. Nothing to do really with the cue ball. Eight balls, free to go in the top right-hand corner, and I imagine he'll still have his two visits in hand when he gets to that stage. He's got a choice of colours here. I mean, certainly the yellow to the centre pocket. The one he's looking at now. As you said, Lee, no hurdles whatsoever in this, the opening frame. It's a best of 19 again, first player to 10, and the familiar towel in the hand for Rob Mackay. We saw that in the quarterfinals against Phil Harrison. Yeah, but he did put an impressive performance in that match. Uh, he may have looked nervous a couple of times, but when the questions were asked, especially in the deciding frame, he was awesome. I think Mick's just over on his last positional shot. That's why he can't take the one into the bottom left. He's coming back up, and it looks like he's come high enough this time. We'll tell by his body language. I think he may have landed in the exact same spot as he was before. Just checking it out. Yeah, look from the overhead there. It doesn't look like he can get through to that ball, Lee. So he's going to have to take the one into the opposite corner again. He's had a couple of glances at it, so it must be tight. Whether he's deciding to, to play the other ball and clip it in off the red and go that way, which is a dangerous shot. But he has still got two visits, so... In the seconds. sensible shot, if it doesn't go, is to play the outside one, the one that the cue ball's nearest to. But he obviously thinks it goes. And he's playing it off the red. It's a great shot. Yellow off the red, keeping his two visits. A great shot. Very creative, and Mick Hill's got all the weapons. We were talking before this match kicked off that one thing different about Mick Hill in comparison to Phil Harrison, the fellow that Rob Mackay took out in the quarterfinals, as you see that great shot once again from Mick Hill. Is Mick Hill's got a few more weapons than Phil Harrison does. Yeah, I mean, probably he's the only player you would say has got a chance of stopping Gareth in this tournament. I mean, Rob's a great player, but I think all the fans would like to see Mick against Gareth in the final. Still carrying his two visits, so if he doesn't go in the middle, it must do by the way he's played position. I'm sure that it does go in, though, because he wouldn't play the cue all over to there. Well, I'm not so sure. I don't think that black does pass into the center pocket. Well, it must have been adrenaline then, Jim, to go that far over, because he's overrun it by probably a foot if he doesn't go. I think it must be tight. Either, either way, he could just play it through to the cushion. He's going to run through with the cue ball. Just try and hit anywhere near the knuckle would be safe. He's, play he's play playing it off the red. Yeah, it's not a cushion. He's not going to hit a cushion. That's crazy. Foul. That is absolutely crazy. Two visits. Red balls in play. He must have had adrenaline rush on, on the, the shot before. I mean, he looked nervous when he lagged up, but I mean, that's just careless. Crazy, I think he's just said. That's the exact words I said. <coughs> And as you saw in, in the quarterfinal with Phil Harrison, if you give this guy the confidence, he'll come back and bite you. Well, he's got a chance to get his arm going. Oh, oh there's a cue ball. Is foul. Well, that's just incredible, Jim. He had one shot to get his arm going. Now Family. he's going to be occupying the chair. And once McHill deposits his eight, he'll have the break in frame number two as well. And two unforced mistakes, one by Mick Hill, the next by Rob Mackay, and it's Mick Hill that gets the last lap. One nil over Mackay. And finally, just to put the ribbon on the package here, Mick Hill deposits the eight. Back to his chair, probably still shaking his head. But it's a win, nevertheless. But that was very careless from Mick Hill, and it should have been capitalized on, if not for a wayward cue ball from Rob Mackay. Mick Hill to break. Frame number two, one nilly leads.
the 2004 world champion. Good favorite to progress through to the final here. Red ball potted. It's made a red ball. It's a good split, but the cue ball's gone to the bottom area of the table. Yeah, he might just have to take yellows here, Lee, unless he fancies taking the red thin into the middle. Yeah, he's just having a look around now to see. Um, I mean, the problem with the, with the yellows is that Yellow you've got nominated. the cluster on the right hand side. Yeah, but I think he's nominated yellows. We had a referee, Phil Turner, call that. Because if he'd have been taking reds, he'd, the, the call would have been red balls in play, not red Happy balls seconds. nominated. So. Uh, well, he, he must think that he can uh, manoeuvre his way around those three yellows on the, the right and centre, the, the, the bottom one of the three. Yellow balls must in pass, play. or the top one may be able to be planted onto the other one. Mm, looks like that. Was given the opportunity to erase the memory of that lapse in the opening frame. And if he can clear up here, Get himself back on track mentally. Yeah, he's ball controlled there. He just played the plant, left himself on the other yellow ball. He can play position back down onto that one. And the tricky shot he's going to have is the eight ball because you've got a couple of reds guard in it. So he needs to be careful. He's chosen to go down for it now, which is probably the right shot because you can just bring the cue ball around two angles. Perfect. Bring the cue ball back now. Towards the centre of the table. And he's in prime position, but he still needs to play a good positional shot to get on the eight ball. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Rob Mackay will react if Mick can open up an early lead, say probably two, three, four frame lead. Um, w will Rob react and, and be able to respond? We saw last night he was nip and tuck all the way with Phil Harrison and he opened up a, a gap in the middle of the match. He had a three-frame lead at one point. Phil came back to level for that nail-biting 17-frame decider. Well, he's got enough angle on the, the yellow on the, the bottom rail. He can just punch the cue ball out. Just needs to get the right angle on the next one. He's overdone it a little bit. Might be stretching over that red. He's overdone that quite a bit, Lee, and being right-handed, this is going to be very awkward. His bridge hand is going to be very near the one red, and as you've already noted, he's going to be queuing over the other. Yeah, another careless shot there, so it's a scrappy start, really, by both players. I mean, he still should make the ball, but he's got to stretch over, still gain position. i tell you what, he was very close to that ball as well with his cuff. Referee Phil Turner was right in there, make sure no foul was committed. And he's landed in no man's land there, he's, he's still got a pot on the eight into the top left, but... <coughs> Very missable, into a blind pocket. And the reds are wide open, should this not go in? No dangers for Mick Hill, though. That was a good boost of confidence, a clearance to get him 2-0 in front of Rob Mackay. Rob Mackay has the break, trailing by that score line here in frame number three. And he used the cut break very successfully in his match against Phil Harrison, hits the second ball down, in this case the yellow, and brings the cue ball over the left-hand side, and there you see it again. I mean, that's a good break, but it's such a dangerous break because you're not guaranteed to make a ball, and what you do do, you split the pack really well. I mean, you play that on the, s the smaller table, the 7 by 4 and I find you either get all the balls on the rail or they all come sitting. And if you don't make a ball, you're in trouble. I think Mick could look at taking either set here. As, as you suggested, Lee, they've split really well open. There's one slightly awkward yellow down the rail, but uh, shouldn't be any yeah, dangerous. I, mean, I do like the break. I use a break myself sometimes. It's just it's such a dangerous break because you can just... Keep opening the table up for your players that you're playing against. Certainly the, the class of Mikkel, you're not going to get another shot. Red balls in play. And I think because of that yellow, he's probably taken. That's why he opted to take reds here. And everything's in the open. This is just about controlling that cue ball. 
Yeah, ideally you wouldn't like the, the yellow to be sat in the middle of those three reds. If that was out of the way, it would be uh, probably a 95% chance of clearing. And that just lowered his percentages a little bit. Bit of cue ball control required. That's probably Mick Hill's greatest trait. He's okay, very good with the cue ball. Whether he's playing pool, snooker, American pool, he always seems to get that cue ball on a sixpence. It's not discounting his potting as well because he doesn't miss many of those. And pretty well smooth sailing for Mick Hill in the 2007 Riley's Poker.com world title event here. An 8-2 win in the last 32 over Shane O'Hara. And then he took out Northern Ireland's Ronan McCarthy by the same scoreline in the last 16. And then it was the 1998 world champion Carl Morris. <coughs> Went down to defeat 9-4 at the hands of Mick Hill. So he really hasn't been tested as yet. Yeah, he hasn't been tested. He didn't want that red to go in, so he's now out of position. But, I mean, he did come through probably one of the toughest sections of the draw. He had Keith Brewer in that section, which was uh, knocked out by Shane O'Hara. And also he beat Ronan McCarthy, who's he probably won two or three tours in his career. Top Irish player. So he's obviously in form, and that's a very good shot. He's just landed betwixt and between, and if he would have stopped a bit short, he would have been on the other one a bit firmer. He'd be better on the top one. So he's got a bit of travelling to do with the cue ball. And you've just mentioned the draw there, Lee, and looking at it, there was a certain L Kendall in that half part of the draw as well. I don't quite know what happened to you there. No, I wasn't in that section. I was in Carl's section at the bottom. I would have played him on the TV. I mean, what about the, the, the group stage? He's come through. There was Mick Hill, Shane O'Hara, Keith Brewer. It was just bloodbath. 30 seconds. I mean, I was fortunate to be the other half where, you know, there's good players, but you don't want to be playing your McCarthy's in the last 32. No, quite right. I mean, uh, strange Ronan. Didn't seem to bring his A game to the World Championships, though, does he? He's never really shone here. And that doesn't look hard enough. Well, uh, you ball just get the play. feeling if Rob can just find the form that he found in these quarter final, he could put Mick under some pressure because he looks extremely edgy. I mean, he is fortunate to be a 2 0 leader. Yes, he had a patch in that quarter final where he won four on the spin, middle section against Phil Harrison. And Phil Harrison is a very worthy campaigner. A solid player. As you said, Lee, if he can just find that sort of form again, you can put Mick Hill under a lot of pressure. And if he, if Mick like lets him off, then you know he's going to. You know, you, you, you give somebody too many chances, they're going to find some stroke from somewhere. And most of the top players, Mick Hill included, normally don't let you get in stroke. Well, Mick has the sort of game that. He can really dominate an opponent. And Rob will be well aware of that. I think he knows that this is, it's early days in this match. Two nil he trails, but this is a very important visit for him. I mean, you, you, you've got Rob who's played Jason Twist in the last 16, Phil Harrison in the quarterfinal. He's got to have the belief to take out McHill. I was talking to some of the, his West Indian team, and they're saying he, he's up for it. He fancies beating him. I said, "Well, he's fancying it and doing it." But they seem to think he's going to do it. Has, has a player ever gone into a match that you've experienced, Lee, where he says, "I've got no chance"? Uh, they shouldn't do. I mean, sometimes people have negative thoughts. But I was impressed with the words coming out of his mouth when he's saying that I fancy turning him over, and people have written him off a couple of times at this tournament, and he's saying, "I'm still here." But I think, he ha I think you have to believe in yourself. I mean, sometimes it can be a false sense of belief, but you'd never let anybody know that you really don't fancy your chances. Look uh -huh. out, look out. Oh, oh he's so close to that side <laughs> pocket. He's had a very good nudge there. <coughs> that is a lifeline because that would have been 3-0 on the cards had the, the cue ball gone into the centre pocket. It's a tester, but, you know, a soft little screw, he should be fine. Oh, 
He's nervous. He's very nervous. That did wipe his feet through the back door. And that one didn't wipe its feet. That one did not enter. And I tell you what he's done there, he's rushed that. He's not composed himself, he's thought it's a, it's a straightforward black and he's just got down and queued it and he's just not even looked at it properly. Like, I think he, he was nervous. The nerves exposed yeah. themselves on the yellow. He thought he missed the yellow. Yeah. He needed to stand up and reset himself. Yeah, he was extremely edgy on that. Um, if there's anything going to come good out of this match, he needs to just comp compose himself a bit more. And I don't think this is good for Mikel either. The long eight. Mikhail, 3 0. And Rob Mackay left to wonder where it all went wrong. It would be Mikhail with the break in number four. I mean, should Mikhail go on to win this match, he's going to play uh, Gareth Potts in the final. It's looking like it's going to go that way. And he doesn't want to have a match yeah, we'll where. You see that yellow again, though, Lee. You see that, as you suggested, it's wiped its feet. And look, he's just got straight down on the black. It's almost like he's just a practice shot, you know. It can only be nerves, so, I mean, you can't just miss blacks like that, Sean. Absolutely. Pressure with a capital P. And Rob Mackay's nerves have been exposed to everyone here watching this match and our viewers at home. He has to contend with that as well. The one thing we didn't see, we didn't see his head go down last night when Phil Harrison came back at him in that quarter final. Fourth frame, Mikhil to break, leading three frames to nil. Mikhil happy with the rack, into frame four, three nil he leads. And nothing down. Open table. And he doesn't appear happy. Probably didn't hit those quite as hard as he would have liked. Yeah, I think it's uh, not what Mikhail wants. He doesn't want to get into a match where he he loses concentration because when he comes to his next match, he's got to start finding some big weapons and using the weapons which he has. Uh, I'm wiping Rob's chances out a little bit in this match, how it's going. But if, if Mick carries on as careless as this, he one, he's going to give too many chances to Robin. Might lose the semi-final. Table. Looks unlikely at the moment, but it's so hard to raise your game for the final if you're going to be having a scrappy semi-final. Rob might have just recollected his thoughts there during the break between frames because. Uh, could have been quite easy then. He could have come out and just tried something a bit extravagant on that dry break from Mick Hill, but he didn't. Open table. He's played a containing shot, and uh, Mick's just returned the favour now, so he's going to have to find something here. And Rob wasn't thinking when he played his first safety because Mick was going to have a very easy reply. Open table. Yeah, I just don't. I think Rob just didn't want to go f for the finish. He had a chance of a red into the centre. I just think he wants to calm his nerves down and try and just get a tactical game under and just. With ideally for him, he'd like two shots with an easy finish on. Open and I table. think Mick has just given him a chance. Because he's not moved that bottom, the top two of the reds far enough, so he's left him, Rob, the easy opening here. Yeah, he's, he's got no intentions of going. He's got no confidence right now, Lee. I Open think table. you hit it dead on the head when you said he just wants to play a frame that he can at least get to the table a few times and settle into the match. Because... He's a very nervy player right now, and I think Mick Hill senses that too. If Mick Hill gets any kind of an opening here, he's going to let his cue go. Yeah, this is going to settle Mick Hill down because he knows that he can make one or two mistakes in a frame where normally when you're playing in a world semi-final, you know, one mistake. I mean, look at the quality of the, the first semi-final. Lee Clough didn't miss a ball for seven frames, and he ended up losing the match. So another little safety shot from Mick. Could be a long frame. Open table. No problem, I mean, I would just pop the red and get onto, onto the reds this, this frame. Take the red into the centre. And just promote those four 
reds on the right hand side and make a block blocking ball to stop the two yellows from going but his confidence is very low it's, it's a big ask to knock in this first big ball 30 seconds yeah that's good to see red balls in play uh, compose himself now he took up a couple finishes against Phil Harrison in that quarterfinal match that were tremendous efforts I thought he was fantastic in that final. I, I, I only watched it from 4-1 in that quarter-final. And he really impressed me. I thought, well, if he could turn up and play like that, he's going to give Mick a game. Well, that pocket still haunting him. Yellow ball's in play. It looks to me like he can't get to his seat fast enough. and That's always a sign of... A fellow that's having a little tussle with his emotions. Yeah, his brain is just in the wrong gear at the moment, and he's not quite thinking straight. And this is just happy days for Mick. He's going to play the plant and go game. He did want that to go because he would have uh, gone for the yellows there. But he's thinking to himself, well, he's not too bothered because he doesn't fancy him to knock a long ball in. I mean, that's it, Lee. That, that shot was always a. It was a safety shot as much as anything could say. It wasn't going in, it was covering the pocket, and he was virtually even robbed nothing. I mean, particularly those four reds clustered together. I mean, Mick can work round those for his yellows. Yeah, I think Mick just played it a little bit careless, really, because I think if, if that was a vital shot and he needed to get it, I think he would have got it. But I think he was thinking a little bit, well, if I get it, I get it. It doesn't really matter. And he was right. But he doesn't want to let Rob to find his feet at the moment. He's got him under the cosh. Prime position on the yellows here. Yeah, another opportunity presents itself for Mick Hill. Yeah, he can just run that yellow into the middle. Dispose those two yellows on the right hand side. Yeah, I mean the good part here for Mick is the the four red balls. All in a bunch, not making any blocking for those yellows on the right hand side. So, it should really be plain sailing as somebody of mixed uh, quality and class. 30 seconds. Must be running away a little bit here. Might have to cannon into him. That's a good shot. I mean, he didn't ideally didn't want to go into him, but he's just got the off angle. Yeah, I mean, because ultimately that one, the yellow that uh, the cue ball's closest to, that could be his last ball, Lee, for the position on the black. Yeah, he could do what he could have choose now, to take take the yellow in the in the corner, either screw back or just stun it in and take it all the way up the top. Yeah, I think he's going to take it all the way up into the long rail. Hold the cue ball, draw it back a little bit. If he gets a ball, it's that pot in the black, it's frame ball. Missed it. Oh. Well, we've seen that pocket two or three times now. It's it's kicked balls out for players, and uh, it was mixed friend there because it's accepted a ball that, as soon as you've hit it, you think that's not in. I think it was only the pace that kept it in. He's overcut that. Just careless again. You can hear the supporters on Rob's team from the West Indies urging him on. Again, Mick just seemed to uh, rush that, similar to Rob's shot if in earlier on in the frame, or the, sorry, in the previous frame. You see, he's, he didn't he didn't take much time on that shot, Lee. I think he's lost his concentration. I think he thinks that his opponent's struggling, and he's going to get two or three chances. Well, just think he's beat Phil Harris and he's beat That's Jason Twist. Don't keep giving the chances because at some point he'll get his confidence back. That's a great shot. I got to tell you, Lee, that. I share Mick Hill's feelings. I mean, Rob Mackay has given me nothing from which I can believe that he's going to produce any form to this point in the match, and I wish him all the best, but he's got to prove prove it to me right now that he's ready. He was slightly, slightly unfortunate on that split there. He split that little cluster up, but there's the one that's uh, gone over towards the left-hand corner pocket. 
30 seconds. Yeah, I think he'll probably try and get over for that now and just have a thin clip at it. So he's, played, he's played a good shot there. <coughs> Excellent yeah. control shot. Great shot there from Rob Mackay. Giving himself a great chance here to reduce this deficit back to two frames. Well, this is like a tentative little shot as well as this. Thing clip into the bottom right. And watch his head, see if he stays still. He almost forced himself to cue that one. Yeah, if you remember, in the middle of his quarter-final match with Phil Harrison, he started to struggle, and he was playing tentative little shots, Jim. He was that was a, he was almost like a little stab at the ball he had, and several times he's he's, he's miscued almost, and uh, he's not got the pot. Yeah, he doesn't want this red to be on the cushion because uh, it's missable when you just bang him down the rail from the rail. Played a nice shot there, left himself a long one. It's open that he's straight or with the off angle, he doesn't want to be coming too far away from the other red. Taking the outside one of the two. And just draw it back a little bit. Struck that with a bit more authority. Much better luck here from Rob Mackay. This is a little bit more of the standard that saw him through to the semi final. And now a little extra time. Just gather yourself. And that was a much more punishing visit at least sending a message to Mick Hill that he is ready. 3-1, Mick Hill leads. In the lead. Trying three frames to one. With Mick Hill, 3-1 in front. Rob Mackay from the West Indies. Looking for a ball down on the break here in frame number five. Oh, that was a good break, a good split. Unfortunately, the cue ball got kissed up to the top of the table. See Rob again on the break shot. As you say, nice split, but the uh, cue ball's gone back up the table, Lee. And uh, now he's going to have to find a good opening <laughs> pot here. Otherwise, he's going to hand the initiative straight back to Mick. And that's not what that he wants after play. he's just got his first frame on the board. 30 seconds. Well, he's nominated the reds, so he's he's on the reds. He may well just trickle the red down to the bottom right-hand corner. If it goes, it goes. He's uh, still on for the finish. If not, he's covered the pocket. He's jacking up for another one. This is a big shot. Oh, yeah. a great shot that one. Long red into the bottom left-hand corner. He wouldn't have potted down the first couple of frames. Well, I'll wager the way that he feels now, he wishes he could play that eight again that he missed in the early going. What a shot from Rob Mackay. Yeah, and if you remember in his quarterfinal, I spoke to him before his quarterfinal and I asked him about his game and uh, he did admit to being uh, a little bit erratic sometimes. He doesn't always take the ball you'd expect or play the shot you expect and that's certainly what he did there. Yeah, I think we all thought he was going to play a shot down towards the right hand corner pocket and he's just pulled a rabbit out of the hat with that pot. But this is not an easy finish but um, should he get it, Mick will be kicking himself because he's, he's got himself back in the match and what he's done is got him composed, he's let Rob get himself into the game. Yeah, Mick would have taken that last frame 4-0, Rob would have been coming to the table with Probably le very little confidence. If you'd have gone 4 0, you wouldn't have potted that long ball. It's just how your mind plays games with you. you still got a little work to do here. I think he's trying to screw back behind the other red for the red into the centre. He's played a great shot. A little bit unfortunate, he's run a little bit too far. But still played a good shot. May have to stun it on and off the cushion. Possibly hold it, but he's going to be running away with the cue ball. I like the method that he's employed, though, Lee. He's starting to attack the table. 
And for me, that's when he's at his best. That's obviously the way that Mick Hill plays too, but seconds. you don't try and change your game to suit your opponent. You've got to dance with the lady you brought. He's not an ideal position, but the, it's good news, bad news. He's, he's got a long pot, but should he get it? Pots are right in the top left-hand corner. He's on for his second frame. So this is a key shot. The shot of the frame, Lee. Yeah, because to be honest, if he misses it, you wouldn't fancy McKill to miss. Thirty seconds. The yellows, the way they're situated. Four at the top end, three at the bottom. He just could just work his way around them. But Rob McKay's got a say about that first. It's close. It's there. Uh, what a great shot. And that is a shot full of confidence for Rob Mackay. Under pressure and a ball that he knew would be loss of frame if he missed it. One more look. And oh. this one never touched a jaw. I think he can have a stun back or screw to the middle. I don't know if he's come far enough. He's still got a shot at it, but should have been better on it. It's now missable, but you'd expect it expect him to get it nine times out of ten. Yes. Some kind of performance from Rob yeah. McKay. He's responded. He's won the last two and trails now just by the odd frame. 3-2 to Mick Hill. And the team from the West Indies, a little bit more to cheer about now. Rob McKay, some terrific shot making. And this is the best shot of the frame. Long pot, all the pressure on it. And if he missed, he lost the frame. And a good black into the centre. And a very different feel about this match. Now, I was one that was asking a lot of questions of Rob Mackay, given the early going. Mick Hill sauntered to a 3-0 lead. And in fairness, Mackay had given us nothing for us to believe that he was going to contend in this one. You look at that face now, there's no emotion. And Rob Mackay at all. Reminiscent of Dwe Jason Twist when he sits in the chair. You couldn't tell whether he's 8 3 up or 8 3 down. Six frame. Mick Hill to break. Leading three frames to two. What sort of reply can Mick Hill come up with? Frame number six. He's 3 2 in front. And his opponent has decided to make an appearance in this Yellow match. Ball Better late than never. At least he's got himself yeah. within touching distance Yellow now, Mikhail. He's decided to take the yellows. He's probably going to elect to take the long pot down to the bottom right corner as his first ball. That's probably the only chance he's got early. Yeah, the other option you can take the yellow in off the red in the centre, which is probably an easy shot because it's making it a big pocket. Thirty seconds. Never cut it. Red ball's in play. So uh, he's on the yellows because he nominated him. So poor shot, but I don't think there's too much damage done. Still, Mick Hill <coughs> is not showing us the sort of form that we've come to expect from him. He's the number three seed in this event, remember, and actually won the tournament back in 2004. He's had a couple of strange he's matches, haven't he? He had all the, the things that were happening in the, the, the quarterfinal of Carl Morris. And then um, his opponents come out and he's missed plenty of chances. More than most players missing a whole match in the first two frames. So he now needs to refocus. I think he was trying to pot one of those reds there. He's trading off the one red to make a thin cut on the other and get it over the corner pocket. Yeah, I think he pushed the boat out a little bit there. I don't think it was um, 
I think the shot was on, he just developed him and opened the frame up for Mick. But in fairness, there wasn't a great deal on anyway. So, yellow to the top right. And it's absolute mile off. If Mick Hill doesn't sort his head out, <coughs> he's going to be in trouble in this match because he's going to give his opponent so much belief. Yeah, and I don't understand because I think he had a yellow to the to the bot <coughs> bottom left corner there. And he, he could have taken that. It was a far easier shot than the one he took. Yeah, but that was the right shot to play to win the frame. I mean, he's not gone back to his seat. He's up by the scoreboard. He can't, he can't believe the situation he's put himself in. I mean, he's just opened the balls up now. I mean, these are probably a, an 8 out of 10 finish. Yeah, and the way Rob Mackay was, been t was taking his chances last night, his quarter-final with Phil Harrison, then uh, there's a good chance here that he could level this match. And to be honest, 20 minutes ago, we wouldn't have put any money on that, the scoreline being three each. I was just disappointed at how many chances Mick missed. I mean, I expected Rob to miss a few, and he's just missed another one there. And not only that, he's developed that yellow into a great position for Mick Hill. Yeah, you, you, you expect Rob to be a little bit nervous coming in as the underdog, but Mick Hill's won two or three TV events, a world title. He's got an opponent that's missing. You wouldn't expect him to get so unfocused. No replacement for experience. But sometimes coming in as a prohibitive favorite can place undue pressure on your queuing arm. 30 seconds. I know he's taking this finish out, and I don't even think he's thinking the finish. He's just thinking to himself, now come on, Mick, sort yourself out, because he's just all over the shop and the, the frame. So if you notice, he's a little bit more <coughs> composed. He's playing it now as a proper match. Picking his spots, looking, which he should have done as soon as he walked out into the arena. Well, I think the play of Rob Mackay has dictated that. I think if Mick felt like he was just going to have to show up and chalk his Q-tip and get the passage through to the final, he's had to rethink things. Yeah, and I was having a chat to Rob last night after he won. He said, well, nobody gave me a chance in this. He said, because everybody's saying Phil Harrison had the experience. Well, I've been playing the game a lot longer than Phil Harrison has, and uh, I've got just as much experience. may not be on the world stage, but he said, I've won tournaments, and I can do the business, I know. And it's just, as you said earlier on, Lee, in the commentary, that uh, he feels he can beat Mick Hill. Yeah, but he hasn't got the experience that's needed at this level. Not of the standards of a Phil Harrison and Mick Hill. He's, he's had a great tournament, and he's done a lot, uh, probably in his um, in his area and team events and stuff. But playing out on TV, he's got no experience. No, I say he admitted that, but he just felt that his, his years of playing the game and having played big matches against big players in the London area. There's been some very good players in that London area, Lee, over the years. He felt that uh, he had the relevant experience. I'll have to agree to disagree with him on that one. Oh, it's just yellow, back for the eight ball. He's getting experience now. Much needed. But as is this black for Mick Hill. And it's watching Mick Hill take his fourth frame. 4-2, Four Hill back in front with a two frame cushion. It'll be Mackay with the break though in number seven. Seventh frame, Rob Mackay to break. Trevor Rob Mackay out of his chair, accepts the cue ball, and now wants to lash into these colors in frame number seven. The cut break, pulling the cue ball over to the left-hand cushion, dangerous. Foul. I was just going to say that was going to happen. I just feel sometimes with that break, especially if you're a bit nervous or you're not settled in a match, if you catch the Two front visits. ball instead of the second ball, Open that turn. white ball flies Down off. See, once again. That's what he's done, he's hit the front ball. Mm -hmm. yeah, you see that in slow motion very clearly, Lee. 
And what's that? Two, two out of three breaks he's done that. Second time for Rob. He opened the match by putting the cue ball on the floor. Interestingly, he actually checked the pack as well before. We've, we've not seen him do that in his quarterfinal match or the first two frames tonight where he's broke. So perhaps he wasn't happy or he thought there was something wrong the way the, the ball was being racked yeah, with position. It was slightly low or high, but uh, it's a fantastic chance now for Mick Hill, Jim. Yeah, and he's replied, hasn't he? At 3-0, he got a bit complacent. Mackay came back at him. And every chance for the heavily favored Mick Hill now to reestablish that three-frame cushion. And nothing short of a glaring mistake is going to stop it. He's shaking his head. But these yellows are there to be taken. Yeah, with Mick, you always see the emotion. He shakes his head and everything, but I could tell he wasn't right at the start of the match. Now he's looking a lot better, more composed. Sticking the yellow in the bottom left-hand corner. Coming behind the red. He's gone right out in the middle of the table. He's gone a little bit too far. I think he's OK. Yeah, he can just take the one in the, the middle here, Lee, and then he's just pointing there where he wants to leave the cue ball. He's, he's played a good shot, um, to be fair to admit that he did play to come up for that one and looked like he was a little bit thinner on it. But he's still got his two visits. I'm just stunned this end. Just be a little bit careful now to get on the black. Doesn't want to have the wrong angle having to hit a cushion if he can't pop it. Goes in the in the, the left hand centre so he'll be fine. He can just drift out into the centre. And he's never going to use the second visit. Mick Hill is back, and back with a three-frame cushion, 5-2 over Rob Mackay. He swiped that one against Mackay's break, and he will break in the next. As the crowd looks on, many expecting Hill to progress through to oppose Gareth Potts. Five two in front with the break in the next. You can't see any other candy gem, you can't see anything other than a, a Potts Hill final. Well he's halfway there. <coughs> like I said at the very early stages, Lee coming in as a big favorite. Doesn't count for a bean. Eight frame. Unless you can play Mikhail to break. And put the Maybe result down when it counts. 5 2. The machine gun settles in to frame number 8. He's 3 in front. And nothing down. Open table. Same thing again there. Cue ball's finished at this uh, top end of the table. So he's, he's doing a similar thing to what Gareth Potts did or was trying to do in his semi-final. Trying to draw the cue ball back up the, the table so it was out of harm's way. And, uh, I don't know what it is, but with, since playing with this cue ball for a, a few weeks practicing for the tournament, you, t you tend to find yourself behind the boat line from the break all the time. I, I don't know if it's because he's got two grams heavy or it just happens a lot. It just Yellow ball's in So play. many times you see it, certainly when I break, I'm behind the string line every time. I don't know if it just reacts a bit more when you put bottom on it. I don't know. A lot of work to do here for Rob. Yellows and reds, to be fair, awkwardly placed. Doesn't look like this frame's going to be one in one visit by either player. Thirty seconds. Got those two awkward yellows on the right hand side. Three reds in the way and also a red below them. Blocking the pocket. So I'm not sure how he's going to attack them. I'm sure he can lead to be honest. Well, he's just trying to try and play a containing shot here. You see that yellow does go, but what would what would be the point of potting it? Probably none. That's why he's got 
I don't know he's gone for it, he was trying to cover the bag. And I tell you what, if that hadn't dropped, that'd have been a foul. Because nothing had reached the, the cushion. That would just looked like he was just going to hang on the lip and it, it fell over the line, if you like. Found it strange there, though, where he got down to shoot that yellow and then went over to see if it went. Wouldn't you check to see if it went first? It always helps, Jim. I'm sure he's going to put this one over the bag. Let's count on going. And I can't see what shot he's going to have. Is he, is he going to try and take the yellow into the, the top right or the bottom right as we look on the overhead shot there? Well, it must be. He's awfully close to the red and, as you say, pushing the boat out. But be some finish if he gets it. Can't see it. I just can't see him finishing from here. I mean, I can't, I can't even see that. I can't red. see him pocketing a yellow from here. It looks like he's playing the double, so he's going to count the cue ball into the, the yellow above it. Seconds. Try and cross double the yellow into the centre. Oh, this is Houdini style, this. And oh, the cue ball come back and kissed us. <coughs> it's a tricky shot, that one. I think he's been a little bit lucky here. He's not really left Mick an easy opening shot. Might have one into the bot right. You see there. Rob again, no emotion. Just went back to his chair. In fairness, he's not shaking his head at all. So he's going to clip the, the red into the right centre. Out for a little bit of luck. Where's the yellow? Foul. And he's had no luck. That's really unfortunate. Two visits. It's not too bad. He's got a couple of tricky positional shots and setting up shots to play. We play the setup shot first. Did did Mick really need to attack though? Then Lee, you know, having having sort of like gained the momentum again. You know, he's he's got a three frame lead. He could have surely could have just found a containing shot and let Rob. Rob's obviously laid his intentions down this frame. He's going to go for it. I think what what he did, he thought, well, I'll have a go at the pot and just see where they come out. Second visit. And if they do go awkward, he's got plenty of balls to play a cover shot, so he probably thought they had a free shot at us. That one sneaked into the, the left-hand side of the pocket. And, uh, this is a great chance now for Rob from the mistake from Mick Hill. It's a better positional shot, an easy eight ball to close the gap. Well, Mick Hill can't seem to get four in front. Rob Mackay won't let him. Pulls one back to 5-3. That one against Mick Hill's break. Mick still looks nicely composed in his seats. Um, he's refocused, but he's still only two frames in front. Well, that was really a bad break that saw that frame go Mackay's way. Knocking in that yellow and giving Rob McKay two visits. Proved conclusive as far as McHill was concerned, and here it is. Yeah, I mean no way, no, sorry, Sean, no way you could have legislated for that. Yeah, apologies, Jim. I don't think, though, yeah, I was going to say exactly the same thing. He, he couldn't really legislate that was going to happen, but, like I said to Lee, I don't know whether he really needed to do that because he knew Rob was sort of keen to get on with it. Could have just played a nice little containing shot. You know, left the cue ball awkward and uh, said, well, go on then, Rob, if you really fancy having a go, you go from here. Ninth frame. Rob McKay to break. Trailing five frames well, The elder three. statesman in terms of age at the table. Frame number nine. Five, three, he trails Mick Hill. Former world champion. The third seed. The McKay. Over to the side. Looks like he's hitting the front ball this time. Little change of pace as far as the break's concerned and gets a ball down. Red ball bottom. Yeah, I think one thing Red I will say on the last frame, I thought Mick, um, he played the clip into it, but he didn't loop where the cue ball was going. He was going into a bunch of reds where there was a yellow there, so he should have played it a little bit more carefully if he was going to do it, but to, be, to be fair, it was such a fine cut, Lee. He was going to have to always play it with pace. Well, that's a bit of a nothing shot, really. He's trying to roll it in, and all he's done is uh, left an open table for Mick Hill. 
Sean Mick will probably take the red balls and try and take control of the frame, use his experience. Well, he's, he's on reds, Lee. Yeah, I think he potted a red off the break, red off the break so because there was no call from the uh, referee. There, uh, it would have been open table call from the referee if you count the six reds. So, uh, you say he's just trying to dolly that over. So it's yellows for Mick Hill. Yeah, so he, he can't really. Uh, want In fact, the yellow goes inside the red. So we play it with pace. He'll settle for that every day of the week. He's happy that it stayed rather than gone. That's why there's no emotion from Mick. He's quite pleased with that result. If that's Mick Hill pleased, I'd hate to see him when he's elated. Well, I don't know what Rob's going to do. He may just uh, roll the red down towards the yellow. He's not played the DF, surely. Yeah, he's potted Foul. it. Two visits. <coughs> oh, I'm surprised he's played the DF. No, no, there's, there's quite a cluster of balls at that uh, bottom end of the table, Lee. And, and Mick's got a lot of work to do here. He just doesn't need that pocket. That's the only reason I, I say it, because Mick can still clear up without going in that area. So one good setup shot and a cannon is up. He's got the ball on the rail at the top left hand corner where he can play the split if he leaves himself the right angle. 30 seconds. Well, he's played it first shot, not played it very well. Second visit. Uh, I can't see him clearing up now. A little too much work to do. He'd like to have held that second visit in hand. He got down nearer the eight. Is that one yellow? Certainly has to be developed. One just below the red. Well, the Where's the cue ball? Foul. Oh, oh, really you can't legislate. They wanted an angle. Two so visits. They could uh, come across and just dislodge the, the red and the yellow. But to sneak in off from that angle, it's oh, you can yeah, play that shot ten times and get it. Yeah, you, look at, you look at that and you say, well, how is the cue ball finished in the middle pocket there? And Rob's not wasting any time. He's got down here. And he's got a couple of tricky balls here. He's got the uh, the red and the yellow together. And also the the eight ball is glued to the yellow. Yeah, as I say, he's played a nice shot there. He had the angle for that split. Remember, he's got two visits. He could, he could elect to waste one. Potentially. Yeah, I just don't think he needed to, to go into them then because that went into the bottom left hand corner. Now he needs to, to put a good ball in the middle. Should get it, but you know, why move a ball that already goes? It's the eight ball he needs to move. So he needs this one to go in to keep his two. It's there. Good shot. Running out of position there with his cue ball. May have to take the one over the middle and come into the middle of the table. <coughs> the match has been a story of hills and valleys. McHill went 3 0 in front. I was wondering whether his opponent was going to appear, and then all of a sudden, Rob McKay showed us a flash of form to take the next two. Only to see Mick Hill come back to re-establish that three-frame advantage. But again, back comes Mackay. I presume that the eight ball must go. That's why he's not trying to move it. Unless he's going to screw into it now. Shot. That's a great yes. shot. Yeah, fantastic shot there from Reb Mackay. <coughs> Develop that ball out to leaving this simple eight ball. Go on, yes. And back comes Mackay. 5-4 in favor of Mick Hill, all to play for in the second semifinal. And welcome back to Blackpool for the second men's semi-final. Strangely, it's going rather similar in pattern to the first. Mick Hill has got a comfortable lead, but then you have to give full credit to Rob Mackay for hitting back, and he's right in this match. Keith Pruer alongside me. Uh, I think you felt it might be a, a difficult match for, the, for both players, and at this stage you just couldn't call it. 
Um, I, don't, I don't think Mick's really played his best. Um, he's, he's played well in patches, but um, he's made the odd mistake. But uh, full credit to Rob, when he, when he has had his chances, he's got in there and uh, he's battled away. And this is the same form as he showed in his previous games yeah. as well. We, we walked past Mick just now as having a bit of a break and he was saying, I'd find it hard to play any worse. Yeah, he, he feels like he's well underperforming by his own very high standards, and I think actually I would agree with that. So you, look, you think he'll up a gear here and really give it a Well, go. I think he needs to up a gear, really, and, um, because if he doesn't, Rob's well capable here of taking the match, so uh, I think Mick realises that. He knows his, his past performances, so we'll see what happens. We will indeed. We're about then to go back to the action. Once again, here's Jim White. Tenth frame, Mick Hill to break, leading five frames to four. The slimmest of leads. Bring Mick Hill to the table. Frame number 10, 5-4. Anxious moments for him. Red and yellow ball, Potter. Yes, it was a good break, but yet again the cue ball comes behind the bolt line. He's made a red on the yellow, so whichever he nominates here, that'll be his ball, so he hasn't got to worry about potting one. Big advantage, isn't it, when you make one of each color? Yellow balls in play. Certainly affords you the opportunity of selecting the more ideally placed balls on the table, and uh, instantly you can put your opponent seconds. under pressure. Yeah, he's nominated yellows, and uh, he's taking the long yellow on into the bottom left-hand corner. Just got to avoid the red. She's done nicely. Good cannon. And if he's landing onto the yellow into the middle. He's been very fortunate. Just get the feeling that a couple good clearances for Mick Hill and he might get his tail up in this match. Even though he only leads 5-4 as we speak, you know, you've just, you've just got that feeling that this is his match to win. Always match to lose. But it's yellow. Into the centre pocket, just uh, on a few stretches. Still a little bit tricky, that red nearest the cue ball is just making it awkward for those two yellows nearest to them. So he's got to pick his path through them. And the eight's not ideally placed either. No, I think he might have been trying to develop that out. Very, uh, on his very first shot, the cue ball went over there and uh, disturbed the red and the black, but didn't get the black out into a possible position. What he would want to do is uh, get low on the, uh, let's say, just showing you now, get low on that yellow. So you just cannon into the black and now position on, on the yellow. So he's just showing you now. So just off straight. Looks pretty good. Probably a little bit straight that he wanted. Yeah, I think so, Lee. Having to stun the cue ball, a lot tougher than being able to just follow through with natural path. Yeah, stun into the black. It's a bloody great shot. He might have to thin the black than he would like, but uh, he should be fine. No, the overhead shot there it looks very fine, that black. Yeah. He's going to try and jack the cue up and get this cue ball back, so try and leave it as straight as possible, that black. Yes, as good as he could do. It's a so black you'd expect him to make, though. Yeah, I think he's going to be playing this into the corner pocket. I'm surprised if he played it in, in, into, the, into the middle. Oh, though, it does go into the middle. What a shot. Didn't look like there was any pocket there. Mick Hill found some, and look at him. Now he's got it back again. 6-4. Mick Hill in front. Yes, a little growl and a... Slap on the side of his chair. I think he's saying to himself, come on, wake yourself up. If you're going to win this match, you're going to have to put a, a better performance in. For real. Trailing six frames to four. Six four. And Rob Mackay just can't quite get back to level pegging against Mick Hill. He was 3-0 down, brought it back to 3-2. Went 5-2, got back to 5-4. Once again... Machine gun Mick Hill goes too clear. But Rob Mackay. Ball down on the break. Red ball he can still put it right here. Red ball's in play. Good visit will certainly add to his confidence.
And he's wasted no time there and he lets it to take reds. He's going to uh, take the red into the centre, I think. So. take the one into the centre, come down, because he's uh, got the two that are cl fairly close together near the bottom end of the table below the black. And you can just pick them off into the corner pockets. And he's just out there for the, the one higher up. Just wants to get that one out of the way so he can just hold position on the next two reds. Just You don't want to come back over that side, do you? He raced over to see if he had the gap between the yellow and the black to that one awkward red, though. He's going to need very good cue ball control here. He's going to have to be very precise in leaving himself the desired angle to attack these reds. Even though they're all available, one slip up and the storyline can change. Yeah, ideally he'd like to be a, a little bit low on the, on the bottom red. Let's see if he can play a nice little stun shot up. I think he's chosen to stay on the higher one of the two. Which might make his position a little bit difficult next time, or more tricky. Doesn't want to be straight on it. It's a danger, but I think he's okay. Yeah, he's going to stun up for the... put the cue ball somewhere just near where the black is. Just got to be careful he doesn't get hampered. Oh, that black or the yellow. Uh, that's why I would have gone the other way. If you stay low on the bottom ball, you can just keep stunning up into your area. And that was adrenaline. A little rush of blood there. And he didn't quite gather himself. He overhit that by some margin. Now everything changes because he can't get over nicely onto that last red. Is it possible? It was never going to be easy. As soon as the hiccup came from the positional end, all of a sudden he was in trouble. Well, the only thing to do is uh, come off the side rail with a little bit of side, trace the left hand side and trying to flip the, the red towards a pocket. If he pots it, I don't think he's going to be on the black, so towards a pocket would be better. He's obviously trying to play some extravagant here because he's not actually asked for the total snooker. So if he was just to come off the rail and hit the red, it would be a foul because he's not had the total confirmed by the referee. So he's obviously playing it at some pace. He's not concerned about the fact he's in a total snooker. Yeah, he, he knew that the pace he's going to hit. He's always going to catch the red thing. Yellow ball's in play. Well, you should call the total snooker anyway just to, to cover yourself. But so many options here for Mick. I mean, I've, I'd be very surprised if he didn't try to extract the foul at some stage. It's a very good shot. Making sure the frame. Putting the goalie in the pocket. Knows that he can't do anything. He's put a good cue ball as well. He's got him glued to a yellow. So the only thing Rob can do is just roll up to it. It's a nothing shot, but there's nothing on. I'd say there's nothing on. Great effort that was. There's no... I just can't believe he's played it, to be honest. <laughs> no Incredible shot. No value. No value at all. That's exactly what I was going to say. Unless he was to pull out a big shot here, but... I mean, he was always going to go up the top of the table. It's, it's not as if he'd been kissed up there. Well, I think it was unexpected to make the red. He would have been quite happy to see it in the vicinity of that other corner pocket. Well, I think he can see the black here, so I think he's, he's going to be having a go at this. I think he's coming off the bottom Probably cushion and going to try and kick it from behind and try and get lucky. He's just looking now at his angle. He's going to try and get a, a full ball contact on it and see what happens. He's got the full ball contact. And I'll tell you what, it's a foul. foul. Nothing's hit the cushion Do after it. he's hit the black. Yeah, and if you'd have played it at pace, that eight was tracking towards the corner pocket. And I can't understand why he hasn't played it with pace. You've got to play it with pace. Well, this is a golden opportunity now for Mick Hill to extend that lead to three frames for the first time. For the second time, he was 3 and up in the match. I'm glad you're still awake, Lee. I'm just testing you out there. That's 
a very good positional shot. Take the yellow into the right hand centre. You can either screw back or run through. Plenty of options, still carrying the two. It's all plain sailing from here. But what I like to see about Mick now is he's got, I don't know, four yellows left, nice and easy, but at least he's walking around, looking more professional, picking out which way he wants to go. Well, you've seen enough of Mick Hill over the years, both of you. I'm, I mean, surely, and a lot of the players, in fairness, you, you've got to see signs when you know these guys are, are up for the challenge and when they're in the zone. Yeah, like with Gareth, I've known Mick for 10 years or more. And you get to know the players, you know the little traits you've got. You know when they're flustered, when they're in the zone or, you know, I've room with him, I know what he's thinking most of the time. <coughs> it was a careless shot there to leave himself on that, but... Yeah, because there's no need to cannon into that yellow there, Lee. He could have avoided that quite easily. Now he's going to have to just force this in to get back up the table for his uh, last yellow. Well, he's still carrying the second oh. visit. Yeah, so. he's elected to take the long pot on. Yeah, I don't think he'll be hitting that with much pace. Just roll it in. No danger for Mick Hill. Back into the comfort zone. 7-4, he leads now. And wants three for a place in the final. And with a quick check frame. to make sure everything Pick is to his satisfaction. Leading seven frames to four. And with a 7-4 advantage, Mick Hill settles in to frame number 12. Lost the key ball. ball. Yeah, yes, he's giving that a real thump and he's... Uh, it's a bad mistake the cue ball in the middle pocket, Lee, because it wasn't kicked or anything like that. Open yeah, he just sort of hopped and uh, bananaed in. So I think he's just got a little bit too much on it, but like I say, when he goes straight and off. But he's giving him one visit, open table. Choice of reds or yellows. Looks like it's going to be the reds. He's got the, easy, the easiest starting ball with the reds, with that red being in the balk area. And uh, probably just about favours, you think, but he, uh, he's come down for that ball straight away. Well, this is a very similar position to what was in the preceding frame, where it really boils down to cue ball control. The reds are there. This is simply a matter of keeping that white under wraps. Yeah, and he thought he'd missed that. He got straight up as soon as he played the shot. The red wiped its feet and found gravity took control. Well, he's got a strange way about this finish. I thought he would have, might have cleared the balls at the top first, and now he's having to go back up to those three balls and the cue balls running around a little bit raggedly really. Yeah, because the path isn't easy, he's going to have to put some some spin on this ball as it goes around because he's got the, the two yellows, one top left as we look and then one at the above the table. 30 seconds. Yeah, and he's, he's taking this one where, well if he hits one of the yellows he's dead. So he's going to have to navigate around the back of the yellow. Push. And he's wiping all the pocket. And once again, <laughs> seems to be a good pocket for it though. Yeah, he's wiped its feet there, but uh, he's going to take the red problem, obviously, into the top left as we look. I think he should probably take the one in the top right and just then take the same ball, the, the ball to the left of it and to the same pocket. Leave the one over the, the bag to the last, but... He's got options, he can go two or three different ways. This is the way I'd be going. Yeah, we have seen already he tends to go his own way on these soon finishes sometimes. 30 seconds. That's the right way, into the same bag. If the match follows suit, it seems every time Mick Hill goes three in front, Rob Mackay produces his best. 
Just needs to run through a little here so he's got an angle on the, the last road to run down for the black. Probably just stunned through the gap if he's feeling uh, confident. If he isn't, he'll just top down on off the rail and himself along the black. What has he played there? Well, he's probably got a very thin cut into the middle of pocket, but... Well, he screwed it instead of stunning it. He should have just stunned over. Mm. Cannot but understand that shot at all, Lee. It's a thin cut into the side. I seem to have a kick on it. He seemed to scare. I'm not sure if he missed it or he just just seemed to throw to the rail. Well, he isn't happy. But he should have been a lot better on it. Yeah, it should have been a lot easier than what he left himself. And he is a picture right now of a suffering man. Yeah, I think we just saw the first little bit of reaction from Rob Mackay. We haven't seen all through this this match. I think whoever wins this match, they'll both walk away thinking. Uh, you know, whoever wins, I think they, they've scraped through on a bad performance, but the loser second. will be thinking, I've lost it. Because you've had loads of chances both players have. The score could be absolutely any score. You, you could not, if you watched all the frames, you didn't know who was at the table. Just pick your score. But again, Mick's got an easy finish on. Yeah, and the Mick Hill that we have come to know over the years would probably already have about three or four yellows down by now. He's taken a lot of time. Yeah, but he actually saw when he played that shot, he came around, he was, a, he was sort of a big shrug of the shoulders, as if it really hadn't finished anything like he'd wanted to. It's a great shot there, he's developed that yellow out. And now really, he's just dropped the one into the uh, bottom left of his look, bottom right, and then pick his choice of the three that are in the middle of the table. Mick does complete the clearance here and go 8-4. I can't see any way back for Rob Mackay. I mean, to think that he would have to win the match from that point, 6-1. I think he's got a better chance of finding six numbers in the lottery. So it's just the routine stuff, just a matter of rolling his last two balls in to extend his lead. Just a tidy little clearance here for Mick Hill. The 2004 world champion is not making the fans from the West Indies very happy. It's 8-4 over Rob Mackay. Rob Mackay. Trailing by four frames now, is in dire need of a good break. And a break and finish would be just the order of the day for him. Frame number 13. The cue balls being volleyed to and fro. And in the end, it's an ideal set. Well, this could well be the tonic for an ailing Rob Mackay. He's just taking his time a little bit more. And a couple of the frames when he's potted a ball, he's immediately elected the colour he's going to take, but he's uh, not decided yet. Yellow ball's nominated. I would definitely go yellows. Well, he's just nominated yellows, Lee. Yeah, it's definitely the right choice to go. Yellow ball's in play. Yeah, I think he's okay. He can still get through to that, that yellow by the red. So many situations crop up in key matches such as this. And I feel that this is one of those times for Rob Mackay. If he doesn't dish up here... McLeod a little glance at him there. If he doesn't get out here, I think that towel that he's been using to keep his palms dry 
he can toss in. Yeah, I mean, he, he's okay. He's going to screw back and play the yellow into the left-hand centre, but he should have more of an angle than he's got. And i tell you what, he's been getting more and more out of position during this visit, Lee. He started yeah. about three shots ago where he wasn't quite right on one ball, then he was a little bit further out, and they say he's not left this easy for himself. Well, the problem he's got is going to have to probably just roll it in, and when you roll balls, you know, anything can happen. You can go over a finger mark, you can just miss it by not cueing the ball properly. Played a good shot though. Good recovery. He's going to need another couple good shots. Yeah. He'd be happy if, it, if the yellow went in past the red into the centre. Looks very tight, so he may have to take the yarn to the top right. As I say, he's, uh, he's just never been quite in the right position throughout this visit. And this putting, is putting undue pressure on himself, Lee, sorry. Well, he's just made this, this, this shot missable because he's, he's bridging. You know, he's going to run on and off the cushion. But how awkward That's does he seconds. look over the balls? He could stun him off if he gets too much into it. He's missed it. It was well missable because he was so awkward, it never looked like he was queuing properly over it. But that's all because he just kept leaving himself the wrong angle on balls and just pushed the boat out again a little bit too much. And such is the nature of pool though. One bad shot usually gets magnified with the next. Yeah, and I think Mick might be looking at playing a containing shot here because he hasn't got an easy, or he's virtually not got a pot on to be honest. He's looking at maybe play the red that's to the left of the black as we look from the overhead. Oh, he's seconds. going to run the cue ball in, yeah, he's developing yes. his one bad ball. He's just going to clip off and just contain him behind the three balls. He's left him a yellow though, a very difficult one, but clear path <coughs> through to that one yellow. Yeah, I think he's under hit that by uh, probably about six inches there. Need to come off the rail and, uh, as you say, tuck in a bit more behind that red. Yeah, he's left him a tough shot though, I mean... <laughs> Not many players you, you, you'd fancy to get that and get position. Almost yeah. looks like a natural in-off into the top right corner. That's exactly what I was thinking. So, I mean, he's going to do a little bit with the cue ball, so he's going to have to jack up. 30 seconds. Yeah, cue ball could be off the table here. Yeah. I think you'll see the, the white ball jump as he plays this shot. If he jumps over the edge of that black, it'll be a foul. He did jump, and he missed it by a long way. And where's the cue ball? Oh. He's desperately unlucky there. It's come round, it's kissed the red. And found its way into that middle pocket. Two visits. And I think that spells the end. Rob Mackay. Rob Mackay in this frame. Well, I think his run might be over in the tournament. Just seems to me like his body language is resigned. He's got the look of a man who's thrown his last punch. You don't get to the semi-final of the World Championships unless you've got the character and the metal. Yeah, he's beaten some good players on the way and um, I think he's probably um, got to go out at this stage. He's not out of the match yet, but you just get the feeling that the momentum is with Mick. But I'm sure, was he to lose this match, he'll walk away and say, well, I had a great tournament. And if he had to pick the semi-finals, Probably Rob wouldn't be the name you'd first think of, so, you know, he's had a great tournament. Yeah, and sometimes, Lee, when you get to a stage that you're content with, trying to take it to the next level isn't easy. That's right. I mean, there's a lot of players have never been in a, a world semi-final, and he's always got that in his armory now, and that little bit more experience. You know, it'll all help his game. Well, Mick's just going to waste that visit that he had in hand because uh, that shot he played there didn't come out right, and... Uh, He's not made the best shot there in the, in the World League, but he should still be okay here. He's just running away of it. I mean, yeah, he's fine. Once again, that red only just found its way into the pocket. And with it, 9-4 follows, and that means that Mick Hill just requires one more frame to book a spot against Gareth Potts in the final. Deep frame, Mikhail to break. Looking for the elusive, fall. deciding frame, Mikhail attacks the colors here in number 14. 9-4 he leads. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
And oh. nothing down. Open table. Nothing down. The Reds look to be uh, quite well positioned on the table. I mean, he could go yellows, but I'm surprised he's gone yellows. Yeah, because he's got that one yellow. And he's, he's attacked that straight away, which is fair enough. If he doesn't land on it, though, he's, he's, in he's in trouble. Yeah. And I'm not sure, looking at the overhead, whether he has done or not. Uh, he obviously, he has. He's queuing for this one. But yeah, you say, Lee, really reds with the ball in, in this. He's just got away from him again, that. Yeah, exactly the same as the previous frame. He's lost control of that cue ball now. He's getting further and further out of position, so he needs a really good shot onto this one. I think he's been a story of the match by both players. I mean, I've mixed up his game a little bit in the second session, but it's been a game where the cue ball's just not been under control. I think they've both been fighting the table a bit. But there hasn't been a lot of flow to the match. Uh, good recovery there. They should have been hitting that a lot harder. I think he played it in a way that he thought, well, I might cover the pocket, but, you know, if he plays it firm, he's on the gallery and he's got the finish on. Uh, quite possibly Rob Mackay isn't ready to head home just yet. He's enjoying his time out there on center stage and doesn't quite want to relinquish it. Well, I think he's just put himself right in seconds. trouble here. I mean, the, the yellow below the, the eight ball will cut into the uh, bottom right-hand corner, but he's got to do a lot of traveling with the cue ball. You can screw around the two and take the, the, the yellow into the right hand centre next. Well, he's got to watch the in off. Played it very well. Perfectly on for the yellow on the right centre. Still needs to pull out another good positional shot though. But again, the cue ball's travelling. Yeah, it seems to be the story of the match. In the latter stages here, Rob's had chances. And you say he's got out of position and then. Uh, Ultimately, it costs him. I mean, he could play the yellow and off the red into the bottom right-hand corner, which would help him to get a better position. Oh, he's played a great shot there. I didn't think he could hold it. Still got a bit of work to do, but he would have settled for that. He's shown us the sort of signs and ability that he does possess. We've seen glimpses of it in this semi-final. I thought he might have took the yellow to the centre and just screwed uh, to the bottom rail and out. <coughs> That's a good alternative. He's, he can just take the yellow to the centre. He's got a choice of uh, coming around the two or just taking the black into the, the opposite centre. Desperately unlucky there, he's finished right up against that side rail. Very, very tricky eight ball here to stave off elimination. And he does, Rob Mackay holds fourth. 10-5, or sorry, 9-5, not getting ahead of myself. 9-5 to Mick Hill. So 9-5. In favor of Mick Hill, that elusive final frame. And if Rob Mackay has his way, we're going to be here for a while yet. His break in number 15. Foul. Well, he's lost the cue ball there, and it's a bad mistake because, again, it's gone straight in that middle pocket. It wasn't kicked in. Was and, uh, Open table. Yellows look very good. The black's just slightly awkward. Family. It's hampered by a red, I think. <laughs> It's down near the bottom left corner pocket. As we see once again the break shot here from Rob. And he just screwed it straight back into that middle pocket. So, bad mistake. Great sound effects. This is just what Mick Hill wanted. Chance to close out this match. And book his place in the semi-final. The final even. Well, Mick's just having a look at the table now. He, he's going to choose the yellows. He's just working his way around that that bottom area. So he's going to.
clip the yellow and run round two. Probably take the yellow into the same pocket as well. No, find the plant and screw straight back for the, the yellow in the middle. Yellow balls in plane. Strange of him to change his mind like that, don't he? Make he stands there for a few seconds working it all out, then just takes two seconds to change his mind. There's Gareth Potts with his girlfriend Angie, Angie looking at looking at um, his possible opponent for this year's final. He's wincing, but I'm sure he'll still be okay. Could just run into the eight ball here if he chooses. So he's played. It's no good though. Might be able to screw back off the edge of the red here. But he doesn't want to come back touching the yellow like he is now. I'm sure we're going into those balls though. He has no choice. He's got to develop the eight if he's going to try and win it at this visit. Just cheat the pocket a little bit here. Yeah, screw off the edge of the red. He won't want to hit the black. Takes a red. Perfect shot. Has he been fortunate? No, he hasn't. He's just got an off angle. He's still okay, though. He can just pot it into the, the bottom right -hand corner and probably come off two angles and just leave himself a longer yellow. Not ideal, but... He's looking up there where he could leave the cue ball. I don't think he needs to go anywhere near as far as there. Quick glance at the clock. 60 second shot clock has to be adhered to. So it's off the side rail, bottom rail, back round. Is he going to get past the red? No, he isn't. Risky, to say the very least, the way that he played that. Yeah, I don't think Cole's he needed no to go over there. I think he should have left himself um, well short in the middle of the table and left himself a, a longer shot and screwed on and off the rail. He had millimetres there to land in. Yeah, and off three cushions. Because if, if he leaves a white there in the, the middle of the vault line, he can screw the yellow in. I know it's hard to hold, but if, the, if he stuns it high, it gets the cue ball nearer the pocket when he when he plays the position. Well, he's coming off the side rail here. Yeah, he's probably looking to try and knock a yellow over to that corner pocket. Top left as we look. It's a great shot. Not quite made it though. Red ball. Good in effort, but uh, he's left. Rob McKay with a chance of uh, choice of probably three or four balls, probably a, a red into the centre with the the shot he will choose. It's an edgy one though, with the the cue ball being glued to the bottom rail. Took the words right out of my mouth, Lee. If he misses it, he knows he's out of the tournament. <coughs> He'd like to be able to get through to the one at the top. 30 seconds. So it's a middle one of the three into the centre. Oh, that's a good shot. It's a good shot, but it was a little bit unfortunate because he gave everything the he gave the pot everything and just hoped that he would land on a ball. Land he hasn't. Yeah, what he's done there, he did have a, would have had a plant on, but he's moved that red between the two, one over the pocket and one that's nearest to the centre of the table. So again, a bit unlucky, he's going to have to take the one into the bottom pocket. And if the black goes past the yellow easy enough, he's just going to make this ball, so it's just as good. And it's fine. It's not his best shot he could have played. Now, if he would have run it on and off the cushion, he would have had an easy shot next, but now he's got to play a positional shot, which he hasn't done. So it's going to have to be the Reds both into the same centre pocket. Two little soft... Oh, he's cannoned into it. Well, that's incredible, really. You say, Lee, all he had to do was, was stun back and take the red, the other red into the same middle pocket. If he was going to play that shot, he needs to play it a lot firmer. Well, this is really missable. Thin clip, white coming probably off two rails. He's missed it. I tell you what, I think he thought it had gone because he stood there and, and waited. And he, uh, well, he, didn't, he didn't deserve to drop, did he? Because he no. was a good ways off. So 
I mean, it's the other corner, the opposite to it. It's been a friend to him, not that one. A golden chance now for Mick Hill to book his date with Gareth Potts. Yeah, I think he can turn him over. He's done. And the final score will read 10-5, but it was far from convincing from Mick Hill. The game effort for Rob Mackay falls short, and it'll be Mick Hill and Gareth Potts to contest the 2007 World Championship. So in the end, Mick Hill was able to do it, but it wasn't that easy. Bit of nip and tuck here and there, but in the end, uh, both players slightly are having missed their best chances. And uh, Keith, let's just get your thoughts about uh, the way it went. Uh, Mick made hard work of that. He made hard work of it. I don't think um, either player brought their A game to the, uh, to the table tonight. Uh, Mick will be pleased he's through and will have to vastly improve if he's going to beat Gareth in the final. Absolutely. And a word about the loser? Rob's had a great tournament. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to have made the semi-finals and he's done his country proud as well. Terrific. Thank you very much indeed to Keith Brewer. Let's just remind you then of how the state of play looks at the end of these two semis. Gareth Potts then beating Lee Clough and Mick Hill in the end quite comfortable over Rob Mackay. And they go through to the final, of course, and it's Gareth Potts against Mick Hill. Two former champions, of course, to find out who will be our champion for 2007. But for the moment, we're going to say goodbye. Don't you dare miss that final. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.